Hello and welcome to the program Church in Focus. Yemi Balogun is my name. And you know what? With me in the studio, a man of God that I highly respect and I thank God for his life. He's one of the teachers of the word for the end time. And I would highly, highly recommend this man of God. He is Reverend Yomi Kasali. And he is a senior pastor of a ministry known as Foundation of Truth Assembly. And also, he runs this conference, quarterly conference, here in the UK called Berean Believers Conference. And that B Believers Conference is what we're going to be talking about today. And that's why I don't want you to miss out. It's an opportunity for you to go receive things that will prepare you for your own ministry so that you don't just sit in church every Sunday warming the pews and Christ is coming soon and he asks you at the end of the day, what did you do with your time on earth? You can't say, well, no one told you because it's time for action. God wants you to move and bring souls in his kingdom, disciple them to the glory of his holy name. So get ready and God bless you as you continue to watch. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Nice to be here again. It's good to see Excited. you again. Sir. Yes, yes, and quite I, some time. I thank God for your life. <laughs> thank you. Because the last time you came, we had positive feedback from the teaching sessions you had. Bless God. And that's why I thank God. I know that you are... We I know God. that you hate the charlatans, <laughs> just like I do passionately. I'm passionate. so, so I really thank God for your life. Thank you. Thank now, you. you know, for the benefit of people who haven't seen you here before, yeah. can you tell us a bit about yourself and the ministry itself? Well, um, well like you said rightly on our own, I run a church uh, back at home in Nigeria, Africa, um, called Foundation of Truth Assembly, about five years old now. Um, I also coordinate... Um, an NGO, non-governmental organization, two, three times a year. It's called Five Loves, Two Fishes. We try as much as possible to take Christianity outside the walls of the church. We go to the communities we in and out around us to feed the poor, clothe the naked, and give free medical services. Every year, we spend quite a lot of money, spend some time with the less privileged. You need to see the clips of that. You'll be shocked at um, the, the kind of poor people that we live around in the midst of opulence and wealth. Next one is coming up in under three, four weeks. That's called Project Five Loves, Two Fishes. Um, one of the poorest slums in the world. Second poorest, according to World Bank, is called Makoko, somewhere in Africa. We, we have tens of thousands of people there. We have medical practitioners from UK that will be coming down to Africa, to Nigeria with us on this particular missionary expedition. Of course, um, we also have the telecast back at home called Impact Today. This is the sixth year, and the Lord is helping us. Um, of course, like my name, Kasali, I have a Muslim background. I got born again 25 years ago, and um, shortly after I left school, and God has been helping us. I'm happily married with two lovely kids, and then the Lord has just been good to us. God bless you, sir. I, I, I hate charlatans. <laughs> <laughs> so much passion. I hate those, those people um, in, in, in sheep's clothing, wolves, so many of them. I hate them with a passion. That's another thing. God bless you, sir. I really yes. thank God for your life. We have a lot in common. Yeah. I came from a Muslim background. Excellent. Well, and I keep telling a lot of people I know that I have never come across an ex-Muslim who came into Christianity mm, and, mm. Is, and is dodgy. Mm. It's, not, it's impossible. It, it, it's impossible. It's <laughs> impossible. You just have this strong, firm, assertive, and let people know what you stand for. That's right. right. That's right. Because you pay the price by just leaving the religion. I, I'm telling you. So you can't come over here and waste your time. I, I, I told them in church a couple of weeks ago, I said, if this was the way Christianity was practiced 25 years ago, I probably would not be a Christian. I, I said it publicly. I went on it to 10 million people. And I said, the way we practice Christianity now is wrong, it's fake, it's, it's just deceitful. Now, if this was a church that, um, that I met 25 years ago, I probably would never have been saved. Wow. Things are different now. Frankly. They're different. They're different. And, and, the, and the, it's the way of life of these yeah. funny Christians yeah. that's hindering so many from coming in. That's right. They that's look right. at it and say, no, these guys are hypocrites. That's right. That's right. I meet ordinary people on the street. No character, nothing. Absolutely yeah. nothing. We just we, we say things. It's all about money. All about self, flesh. We magnify flesh in the name of Christ, for goodness sake. And we deceive people. It's, I believe it's part of uh, the end time program of God. I, I strongly feel it's part of the end time agenda program for, of God. To, to clean the church, to wipe off those people. But things have to get this bad for him to appear and then show up. Wow. Talking about the end time, you know, program of God. Yeah. What times and seasons do you think we're in right now? I, I don't know if you're ready for this. 
about 10 years ago, I remember studying my scriptures and um, I ran into something. And ever since I've kept my mouth short, one or two places I've, I've shared it. And if you ask anybody right now they would, and ask them, why hasn't Jesus showed up? When is he going to come? There's one singular sign that Christians and believers globally and universally believe that's yet to be fulfilled is a gospel going around the whole world and then shall the Lord come. But that is not what Jesus said. And I've said it before, I remember speaking to a theologian years ago, he said it's not possible. We opened the scriptures and it was there. I'll read to you Matthew chapter 24, just one or two verses there. It says in verse number three, and when he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, Pastor, tell us, Rabbi, when shall these things be? First, what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? Three questions they asked him. What, when shall these things be? The things he said spoke about that the collapse of the temple said not one stone on this temple will be left there. That occurred, of course, AD 70 with General Titus invading Jerusalem. Two, what shall be the sign of your coming? And to be the sign of the end of the world. Now, most times we misunderstand Jesus' answer because he started by saying, Take aid. Lots of people will come to the Savior and say, I am Christ. Don't believe them. But in verse 14, he says something there. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come not the Lord come. Most times we mix it up. It didn't say, and then shall the Lord come. So then shall the end come. Don't forget two questions they asked him. What shall be the sign of your coming and the sign of the end of the world? So if you look at both questions, it did not, this did not answer the sign, was not the answer for his coming, but the end of the world. And we know that it will come before the end of the world. That means his coming is nearer than we ever think and thought of. Wow. That is serious. This Berean conference that yes. you stage here quarterly. Yes. So what what is it intended, designed to do? What is it designed to do in the life of the Berean? Very simple. To build and breed Berean believers, Berean Christians. We lack that everywhere right now. The Berean culture in Acts 17, like I said before, and I've said before now, is that culture that Christians should have to search scriptures on their own, not to make these dignified gods or pastors their only agents of scriptures. Now, for goodness sake, we don't even know, so many Christians don't even know how to read the Bible anymore. We don't even teach that. The Berean culture is that which, after you've heard the word, you go and search the scriptures, Acts 17, to find out if those things which you have heard are so. In other words, there is a chance that the things you've heard are not so. And we've heard so many things that are not so. So many things about God, about the devil, that's not supposed to be so. People magnify the devil, they dignify him and make him look like a god. And we've had so many things. The Berean culture, the Berean Christian, the Berean believers, and, and the culture starts with, you know what, the kingdom thing. It's not about the church. I'm a Christian, I love the Lord. I can go to a conference where they'll be teaching God's word and listen and search scriptures together. We come together and search scriptures every now and then to find out if those things which we have heard are so, and if they're not so, we throw them out. Wow. Why is it important for us to understand ministry gift at this point in time? Simple. If you don't understand ministry gift, it's like you don't understand your head. The human body is beautiful. The way God placed us here. We have five senses, physically speaking. Four of those senses are here, situated on our head. And that's where the Bible calls leadership. If you do not understand ministry gifts, you do not understand spiritual leadership in church. And then, I'm not too sure, if you're insane here, your body would move anyhow. When, they tell, when, they, when we come to the point where we say somebody is insane, what we mean is that something up here is gone loose. Therefore, I, I need Christians who want to come together and search scriptures to find out about five-fold ministry gifts and others. People don't know we have others, really. They just think of five-fold only. And they, how, how, who are these people called five-fold ministry gifts? Uh, can anybody just get called into that ministry? How do I know an apostle? How do I know a pastor, a prophet, for instance? Could they have the same similarities and same signs with the prophet of the Old Testament? Hey, wait a minute. What am I a teacher? Do I go around calling myself teacher, Kasali? Or is everybody in ministry, should they be called 
pastor. What's the difference between title and office? What about evangelist? In the 80s, I remember, I'm sure you also remember, we used to have prominent people use the title evangelist, evangelist Rian Bunke, evangelist T.L. Osborne, evangelist Daudu. But all of a sudden, it looks a cake, doesn't it? We don't even know if God still has evangelists today. It looks like God has saved. Everybody wants to get saved. So we all are bishops and pastors now. There's something wrong somewhere. Do we still have modern day 21st century evangelists? Maybe God has stopped calling people into the office of the evangelist. People are confused. We don't know. And so we have new ministries and new ministry gifts coming up. We want to come together. Search scriptures. Watch me. Search scriptures. Whatever the word says a pastor is, is what we're going to believe. Who is a teacher? Who is a pastor? Who is a, an apostle? Who is a prophet? Who is an evangelist? What does the scripture say about these offices and characters and they want to go into scriptures and find them out wow wow god bless you richly you know you know when you look at christians yes. in this country yes. you know, like european christians yes you you hardly you know it's only in the orthodox mm -hmm. section you get mm -hmm. people with titles that's right the bishop the mm -hmm. vicar the this mm -hmm. the that mm -hmm. but just general you know pastors of you know maybe charismatic churches yeah you hardly hear them with titles but i know Titles are very, very common, especially mm -hmm. with the black people. That's right. Or maybe even the Asian people. <laughs> so, so why do you think this is so? Because it's like everybody wants to have a particular title. That's right. That's you get right. a card from, a, that's from right. somebody like a that's business right. card. There's a bishop. Five, 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 five titles what? in one. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> how do we tell who is who? How do we tell who is, who is actually... Who, you know, functioning that particular title, uh, that, that that office. I, I, I get your point. I, I think we're driven with the titles, and it's, an, it's a cultural thing. You just you hit it on the head. It's an African thing. It's a, uh, it's, a it's a cultural thing. Um, I remember, and on the call, nineteen ninety two, hearing late Archbishop Idaosa, Benson Idaosa, at a conference in Benin City, um, back in Africa, he said Africans like title. Give them titles and they work. And he was joking about it, frankly. And then it, it didn't sunk in that they won't work until you make this person the treasurer. Make the other person deputy treasurer, make the other person chief assistant deputy treasurer, make the fourth person chief assistant deputy assistant treasurer. That we just like titles. And an unfortunate thing is it's become African traditional religion. Look at this. Hmm. Because of the 60s and 70s, where our fathers used to have all kind of chief titles, now it's crept into the church because it's in vogue to be religious now. So everybody now wants to have the title. Some call him a pastor, doctor. Some call himself Redmond, doctor, bishop. So, and I begin to wonder, what prophet about the doctor. prophet, doctor? What the, the title reverend, the title pastor, the title doctor? If you have a PhD, keep it your I don't want to know about that. You know what? I don't, just bless my life with the word. Bless my life with your lifestyle. I want to see what you do. Paul said to us concerning his office, he said, not just my doctrine, but my manner of life. He said, follow me, my doctrine, and my manner of life. I think there's been a lot of uh, mis misrepresentations concerning title and offices. People don't even know that those titles are supposed to go along with an office. Uh, Christians are not even aware of the office anymore. We don't even know that offices evolve. And Paul at one time was a teacher. After a while, God said, separate unto me Saul and Barnabas for the work that I have for them. There was a transition. It changed from being a teacher to the apostolic work. Imagine if he was calling himself teacher before that time. Then he changed his title. And after God wants to make him a writer, which after that, he now began to write his memoirs and he wrote epistles. Towards the end of his life, he became author. And that's why we have two-thirds of the New Testament epistles written by one man. He didn't start writing them earlier on in ministry. He wrote them towards the end of his life in ministry. Wow. Reason. Yeah. Wonderful. You know... <laughs> I know it's still talking about titles. Titles, you know? yeah. <laughs> so can one just create a title from himself from you know from, from, from nowhere? <laughs> and let, let me ask you, the word bishop that is now reigning, like I said back in the eighties when we government gave us a simple pastor, pastor, and maybe evangelist. Now the reigning thing is bishop, and if you if you look at it very well, it's pastors that have left strong denominations to set up their own work that want to that usually go for the title bishop for status it's a status thing now 
It has nothing, social status, it has nothing to do with the impact or increase in anointing or grace. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And people do create titles. I, I don't think people should do that. Unfortunately, we have prophetesses now. I begin to wonder, prophetess this, bishop that. I'm beginning to be scared. Maybe we'll begin to have Ark, Ark Pope in the Pentecostal circle very soon. Because it's going way, way, way off. We should just look at the office. And people should discover what they are called to do. That was what Jesus said. He said, whom do men say that I am? People have different views and opinions about him. They looked at the apostles and said, Whom do you say that I am? It has nothing to do with what you call me. It's who I am. And they said, You are the son of the living God. You are Christos, Christ. That's who you are. That's who you are. Though we call you rabbi, we call you master. But the truth is, you are Christos, the anointed one, to take away the sin of the world. That's what matters in life. Not what we call you, but who you are. Wonderful. And you know, I was with a bishop some years ago, and, yeah. um, and the bishop said, he said, you know what? He said, very soon I'm going to actually move forward to become an archbishop, <laughs> because all those small boys, they give themselves the title of a bishop. Yeah. Yeah. So when I move forward, and I'll make my boys bishop so that I can all be on the yeah. same level. Yes, can you imagine? And that's exactly, it's become status symbol. I don't want to be on the same level with you. And it, I don't know how much grace you carry. Is it levels by titles or grace in the spirit? We no longer look at things from the realm of the spirit. How much grace do you have? How much impact are you making? How many lives are you blessing? How many souls have you brought to the kingdom? That's how to measure a man, not with a title the man wears or carries around him. God bless you, sir. Can you share with us some of the feedbacks you got from the previous Berian conference you've had. Oh, beautiful, lovely, excellent. Uh, we've had quite a lot of people coming from different churches. The last one we had, we had at the campground, we had people flying in from Scotland just to come in for three days to spend time with the Lord. We had three days alone with God. We studied scriptures from the very first one that we had here, which was death in the port. Quite a lot of males came in, people made calls, the lives of people were blessed. We have had strong followership. So what should people expect at this particular one? Understanding spiritual gifts. Understanding ministry gifts. I think people should come in yearning, come in hungry coming and i i trust the lord will open eyes eyes of people will be opened concerning offices people need to know what they are called to do people need to find out how god still calls people i want to explain to us from scriptures that truly a man of god may anoint you may ordain you to assist him in ministry that does not mean you have been called of God to stand in one of the fivefold ministries. Paul had associates, Paul had retinue in the scriptures of associates like Luke, like Onesimus, so many, but they did never, they never thought they had the call to stand in a fivefold ministry. They were called to assist a man because we've now mixed it up. Once you think you've done something here and there, you are under a grace and a covering, you jump out. You know what Paul said to the Hebrews? He said, For when you ought to be teachers, you have need that men should still teach you. In other words, it's expected after 10 years, 11 years, 15 years of being in faith that you should be able to teach elementary principles of faith, of Christ. That does not make you a teacher, one standing in the office. The office is different. Paul told Timothy, he said, if a man desires the office of a bishop, aha, there is a man, there was a desire, there was an office. He didn't speak about the title. You know, when, when, when Paul was blinded by the glory of God and, and, and he was going to be prayed for by Nias, he said, Brother Saul. The introduction of Paul in the scriptures was with a simple title called Brother. We'll look at who an apostle is. Do we still have apostles? Or the fact that I, I don't have a title apostle behind my name, does that mean I'm not an apostle? Or even if I am an apostle, must I use the title apostle to define and my office it's all mere nomenclatures these are the things we look at from the scriptures and wow. find out where god wants us to be i believe strongly that people out there who are called into offices and don't even know that some that are appointed by men i think they are called of god they should immediately find their foothold and release themselves from this yoke and this bondage that somebody has told them man cannot tell you hey you know what you're being called you must have witness from the scriptures you know what paul said to them in the Corinthian church he said the signs of the apostleship the signs the way you know if you are called a five-fold ministry is almost the signs for the teacher 
when he teaches the people I have understanding. For the evangelist, when he preaches, there are souls that get saved. That's the middle sign. The same word you use, same word, the way you preach, I preach it, you get 10,000 men saved. I struggle, I sweat, I shout, I yell, and nobody gets it. That means, you know what? I don't have the oil or the grace to be an evangelist. You have it. That's how you know. Don't be ashamed of your office. That's why market preaches the same word that you can preach. It gets more so saved. You don't get it. For an apostle, for a prophet, how do I know if I'm called to be a prophet? Is it the same office of the Old Testament prophet? Is it the same with the New Testament prophet? Of course not. The word prophet simply means voice. A voice. A voice. I will give you New Testament, the Greek word prophet. It means a voice. Because also Saul was also a prophet before he became wow. an apostle. God bless you, sir. Man of God, they, you know, I, I will get this, sometimes people will phone into our program, yeah. send emails in, and they ask this question. But somehow, a lot of pastors don't deal with it well. So, you know, like, how do you identify a charlatan, a, a crook, a criminal? You know, I, I, will, I always look for practical stuff to look out for. But the pastors will say, oh, by their fruit, Bible says by their fruits. So the people want to know, you know, apart from fruit, because some of them cannot even tell the fruits. You know, they can't tell whether the man is gentle. They, you know, well, they are confused because the man is charismatic. So as a result of his charismatic outlook, they, f they forget that he's, he's an, he's, he gets angry easily. They forget that, you know, he, he, you know, he bears grudge. They forget that he, he's a funny person. So what other signs, practical signs, should one look out for? So many, actually. <laughs> I think above all is the character. Um, character is key, and that's what we mean by, by their fruits, you shall know them, is a character. Do not get carried away with the eloquence or charisma. We live in a time and age when people get carried away with entertainment. He looks good, speaks well, dresses nice. I like his demeanor. He, he, he looks calm. The eloquence in the delivery, and we get that, get, that sweeps off, off our feet. And we do not look at the manner of life or behind the scene what kind of a person is he? His values also. Check his values. Finally, every pulpit in Ezra, Ezra tells us, and this is simple, that the first place in the world, in the word of God, where the word pulpit was used, was to do two things. One, read the scriptures or read the law. And two, the people's heart were broken and drawn to God. The way to know if I am a charlatan or sent from God is to look at what happens after I teach or preach. Do people get drawn to me or drawn to him? Do people get, just give my money or give him money? Because thine is the kingdom, the glory and the power, not ours. Check out what the message is, what his word does. Because the enemy also preaches, don't forget that. He has lying spirits as well. So what, what happens to you? Do you have fear of faith after each word, after an encounter with such a person? Do you get drawn to your feet to the altar? Do you bleed and weep on the inside and say, Oh God, I've recognized I'm a sinner? Or do you just want? And the latest, the latest one is this. The Lord spoke to me recently and I told him in church, all this, and this is this is dangerous. You must be careful not to misunderstand me. All these things we call motivational speakers as well. Not just watch me, the charlatans that just want to make money for themselves. The, the second group. And, and those that just want to inspire us, motivate us to become great, become this. It's all about building self. And don't forget, the scripture tells us you must die to self. Call it self-motivation is still self. Self-esteem is still self. Self-empowerment is still self. We must be careful not to push this self stuff to the extreme. Wow. Because it can push to a point where it takes the glory from God and magnifies you as a flesh and a self. Wow. Man of God, we're going to do more of this. Thank you. Uh, this thank is you. serious. God thank bless you. you, sir. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming today. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Look forward to seeing you again, sir. Thank you very wow. much. Wow. That was Reverend Yomi Kasali of the Berian Conference, uh, uh, Ber Berian Believers Conference. You know what? Whatever you do, don't touch that dial. You must not miss it and don't go away. It's called Makoko, somewhere in Africa. We, we have tens of thousands of people there. We have medical practitioners from UK that will be coming down to Africa, to Nigeria with us on this particular missionary expedition. Of course, um, we also have the telecast back at home called Impact Today. 
this is the sixth year and the lord is helping us um of course like my name kasali i have a muslim background i got born again 25 years ago and um shortly after i left school and god has been helping us i'm happily married with two lovely kids and then the lord has just been good to us god bless you sir i i, I hate charlatans <laughs> <laughs> so much passion i hate those those people um in 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 sheep's clothing wolves so many of them i hate them with a passion that's another thing god bless you sir i really yes. thank god for your life we have a lot in common yeah i came from a muslim background excellent well. and i keep telling a lot of people i know that i have never Hello and welcome to the program Church in Focus. Yemi Balogun is my name. And you know what? With me in the studio, a man of God that I highly respect and I thank God for his life. He's one of the teachers of the word for the end time. And I will highly, highly recommend this man of God. He is Reverend Yomi Kasali. And he is a senior pastor of a ministry known as Foundation of Truth Assembly. And also he runs this conference, quarterly conference, here in the UK called Berean Believers Conference. And that B Believers Conference is what we're going to be talking about today. And that's why I don't want you to miss out. It's an opportunity for you to go receive things that will prepare you for your own ministry. So that you don't just sit in church every Sunday, warming the pews, and Christ is coming soon. And he asks you at the end of the day, what did you do with your time on earth? You can't say, well, no one told you because it's time for action. God wants you to move and bring souls in his kingdom, disciple them to the glory of his holy name. So get ready, and God bless you as you continue to watch. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Nice to be here again. It's good to see Excited. you again, sir. Yes, yes, and quite some time. I thank God for your life. <laughs> thank you. Because the last time you came, we had positive feedback from the teaching sessions you had. Bless God. And that's why I thank God. I know that you are... We bless I know God. that you hate the charlatans, <laughs> just like I do passionately. I passion. so, so I really thank God for your life. Thank you. Thank now, you. you know, for the benefit of people who haven't seen you here before, yeah. can you tell us a bit about yourself and the ministry itself? Well, um, well like you said rightly earlier on, I run a church uh, back at home in Nigeria, Africa, um, called Foundation of Truth Assembly, about five years old now. Um, I also coordinate... Um, an NGO, non-governmental organization, two, three times a year. It's called Five Loaves, Two Fishes. We try as much as possible to take Christianity outside the walls of the church. We go to the communities we and around us to feed the poor, clothe the naked, and give free medical services. Every year, we spend quite a lot of money, spend some time with the less privileged. You need to see the clips of that. You'll be shocked at um, the, the kind of poor people that we live around in the midst of opulence and wealth. Next one is coming up in another three, four weeks. That's called Project Five Loaves, Two Fishes. Um, one of the poorest slums in the world. Second poorest, according to World Bank. If I come across an ex-Muslim who came into Christianity mm, and, mm. Is, and is dodgy. Mm. It's, not, it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. You hear me? It's impossible. You just have this strong, firm, assertive, and let people know what you stand for. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Because you pay the price by just leaving the religion. I, I'm telling you. So you can't come over here and waste your time. I, I, I told them in church a couple of weeks ago, I said, if this was the way Christianity was practiced 25 years ago, I probably would not be a Christian. I, I said it publicly. I went on it to 10 million people. And I said, the way we practice Christianity now is wrong, it's fake, it's, it's just deceitful. Now, if this was a church that, um, that I met 25 years ago, I probably would never have been saved. Wow. Things are different now. They're me. different. They're different. And, and, the, and the, it's the way of life of these yeah. funny Christians yeah. that's hindering so many from coming in. That's right. They that's look right. at it and say, no, these guys are hypocrites. That's right. That's right. I meet ordinary people on the street. No character, nothing, absolutely yeah. nothing. We just... We,